Thank, Thank you to the moderator and sages for the privilege of the podium. And Dr. Bagai did a good job setting me up, and I apologize in advance. My talk is actually full of data that will support my argument, and, and so I'll get on to that. Um, uh, these are my disclosures, which are not germane to this discussion. So just as a, as a quick, quick background looking at LAP versus open and why we do choose LAP, um, IPOM and, and some of these patients, this is a large NISQIP review that basically looks at the things that Dr. Bagai highlighted, which are the benefits of laparoscopic repair in matched cohorts. And you can see they're the things that you're all familiar with, lower uh, overall morbidity, lower serious morbidity, fewer surgical site infections, less return to the OR and, and shorter hospital lengths to stay. And, and this holds true in large meta-analyses as well. So the argument here is that we certainly have data to support the use of laparoscopic repair, um, its clinical effectiveness and its safety, whether it be meta-analyses or large NISQIP studies. But yet, what we don't necessarily see in current practice, at least in the U.S., in this national inpatient sample database, is the widespread utilization or the increased utilization of that technique. Now, again, this is data from 2009 and 10. And it has taken off a bit more, but you can still see that it is, in, in many respects, some, somewhat underutilized. And we'll get back to that into how we currently use uh, abridged versus suture closure repair, our current practice patterns, but versus what the data say. So now what? So you've bought into a laparoscopic ventral hernia repair for your particular patient because you understand its potential benefits. Um, you also know there's no current randomized trials looking at the difference between abridged um, repair as well as a closure repair. And also, because I'm not above flattery, we'll quote some data from panelists and other folks that are in the room to support our argument. So um, this is a, a recent publication by Wynn and colleagues, and it does review the literature. And you can see with one risk-adjusted model um, here, this was how they closed defects in these particular types of retrospective studies. Most of them used non-braided sutures. Most of did an extracorporeal or percutaneous technique. Um, all of them use synthetic meshes, and the defect sizes varied all over the map. Um, a large portion of these types of hernias were, were incisional. And what you can see in only three of those publications were their comparative groups between non-closure and closure of the primary defect, uh, or the recurrent defect, as the case may be. And you can see even that data, um, the CLAP study being the one that was risk modified, uh, is all over the map. You have seroma rates as low as 4% and as high as 28% and recurrent rates um, as low as 4.8% and as high as 16.7%. So even in those three reviews, it was difficult to tell if closure versus non-closure was overall better or not. Um, a uh, recent multi-center retrospective um, study, which was done both at Wisconsin and Kentucky and some other places, um, that's my shameless plug, uh, risk stratified patients, these are their categorical variables. There were 97 patients in the uh, percutaneous fascial closure group and 99 in the bridge repair group in a retrospective review. And here you can see they were pretty similar cohorts. Um, the ASA class differed and the prior surgical site infection differed, but they were otherwise comparable. Uh, and so what did they find? Well, really there were no benefits noted with defect closure. Um, it's probably one of the larger as well as the most uh, recent publication comparing these two groups. You can see recurrence rates were the same, surgical site infections, readmission, reoperation, and seroma were not statistically different. Um, you could argue clinically one may be different than the other as far as those percentages, but not mathematically. So then you say, well, okay, fine, that's because one group had small defects and one group had large defects. Um, they thought of that and stratified according to defect size, BMI, age, and gender, and ran the calculations subsequently. And you can see here's an example of the difference between recurrence uh, surgical site infections, readmissions, and reoperations. This is based on defect size, and it didn't make a significant difference whether you bridged or whether you did primary closure defect based on the defect size. So if you look at the propensity score, uh, which is highlighted in this table here, you can again see recurrence rates is basically the same regardless of which approach you utilize. Um, and therefore, the primary fascial closure didn't really result in reduced recurrence, seroma, infection, readmission, or reoperation rates as compared to bridge repair. So Mercida highlighted this, and so will I. So what, what that basically means is that, um, and again, this survey continues to go on, so you're welcome to vote. But the probably smartest people who replied are the ones who picked both choices. Um, and there are, there are a couple of those, because I, I think realistically, 
Um, there are patients in whom you're going to not close, as Dr. Bagai highlighted, uh, and there are those who you may choose to close. But in the end, I think the most important point is that really the bridged repair uh, remains a good operation. Um, there's plenty of data to support its safety and efficacy, more data than there is for closure of the defect. There aren't any prospective randomized trials as of yet to support closure defect. Not all defects can or should be closed. You saw the Swiss cheese defects that she highlighted or, or other defects that may not be amenable to closure may increase post-operative pain. Um, and obviously, therefore, you have to consider the patient and the hernia factors when you think about closure versus not. And um, I think the goal is, and, and the overall arching thought process here, is really don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, just because some people are closing the defect uh, and you don't doesn't mean you're doing anything incorrectly. In fact, the data support you over those that may be closing the defect. Um, and so keep that in mind. Thank you.